The tenth and final season of our adored show got underway with a bang. On the Blacklist Season 10 Episode 1, former members of Raymond's famed Blacklist formed an alliance to devise a plan to eliminate him. The task group was now down three members and was seeking to add two more when an unexpected relative of an original task force member and a former Raymond partner unexpectedly joined them. The Blacklist Season 9 ended with Marvin Gerard giving Wu Jing a list of persons Raymond had assisted in putting behind bars, which laid the stage for the final season's premise. When we encountered Raymond, he wasn't the way we had left him. Contrary to what we had anticipated the season to be about, Raymond trying to defend himself from this real menace. He had firstly abandoned all prudence and presented himself in public in a way that he had never done before. We were curious about what had happened between him, Weecha, and Mears in the previous six months since he didn't appear to be accompanied by his usual security crew. Raymond, however, never takes any chances because of this. He undoubtedly had a strategy, but for the time being, we cannot see it. That must have been a strategy to draw in whoever was after him to use the odd sightings. It would be absurd to assume, six months later, that he was unaware of the person who was after him. The task force and everyone else are never ahead of him. Because this is the final season, it was wonderful to see Aram again. And for a brief minute, I held out hope that he would. The team has a substitute, so we'll have to do without him. I had forgotten about Tadashi because he had been gone for so long. Tadashi is not, at least not in the conventional sense, an FBI agent like Aram is. He received informal training in his trade, which allowed him to pick up skills via unconventional methods. With relation to Aram, he lacks Raymond's strict moral code, which infuriated him. He was willing to disregard the court order prohibiting them from looking into the laptop. Given his prior ties to Raymond, his loyalty is in doubt. Wu Jing and the Chinese government appeared to be involved in a major plot. Due to his status as a wanted man, Wu Jing had few contacts before he got in touch with a sizable group of former blacklisters. His best chance of success was to use the diplomatic cover of a foreign state. The recollection served as a reminder of Wu Jing's intelligence even if most of the blacklisters had vanished from our memories by that point. Given that Liz had gotten him released a few years early, the freelancing was still fresh in our memories. I doubt anyone will ever forget how cruel he was. He is without a doubt one of the worst blacklisters and set up a massive mass casualty disaster that looked like a normal accident in order to murder one person. Apart from the Chinese government, Wu Jing had infiltrated the CIA and identified a blacklister who would locate the freelancer for him. This required a lot of effort, which he put out over the course of six months. Somehow, the CIA managed to remain undetected while posing as a museum. When Raymond went to the post office to give the team an update on his discoveries, he didn't appear rattled. He may have been ready for what was to come or was highly skilled at disguising his anxiety, depending on your perspective. He needed to be concerned in either case. He was being sought after by multiple criminals. The secrecy he had grown accustomed to when eliminating his competitors did not shield him. The best criminals in the world, with unmatched resources and power, comprised this expanding group. His status as a confidential FBI informant had deteriorated. The blacklisters may overlook anything, but they won't overlook repeatedly tipping off law enforcement. The group encountered Sia, Mira's daughter, who resembled her mother. While it may be true that she requested to join the task force in order to learn more about her mother, her request could also be a ploy to gain favor with the task force in an effort to have it disbanded. Everybody who has experienced a loved one's death as a result of Raymond's antics has a right to feel a certain way. The sense of being taken advantage of and blaming yourself for losing a loved one rank among these emotions as the strongest. Little was known about Sia's mother's activities and personality. If she had learned anything from her time with MI6, it was that her mother would not have passed away if it weren't for Raymond. She may have joined the organization as a means of attempting to understand who her mother was. Harold will eventually have to consent to include her on the task force because they require her, and he is sorry for how Mira's situation ended. To persuade Harold to accept her as a team member, Sia exploited the emotional angle. It is reasonable to assume that Wu Jing has major plans after successfully rescuing the freelancer from CIA custody. The season's main issue was immediately established in the excellent season premiere episode The Night Owl. What we normally anticipate from the blacklist, it was packed with action and unexpected surprises. It will be interesting to see how this plays out because there are still a lot of unanswered questions, such as what Raymond has been doing aside from attempting to deal with the threat and what precisely Wu Jing is plotting. What were your thoughts on the season's debut? For the season's conclusion, are you prepared? Enjoy the video, right? Subscribe to the channel and turn the bell icon to see more of them. Also leave a like to help the channel out. Thanks for watching, see you next time.